Maybe it was like, maybe it was the Roswell rods that were here from the Ross Hotel that was making me say alien so much. Maybe, maybe Laura and Mr. Bross were aliens. At this point, nothing would shock me, you know? You know, I don't know, like, cause it sounded like real people. Like, I'm not talking about ghosts. Like, this is real people doing some sort of like weird chanting sh And if we are in some town with some weird freaky deaky thing going on, I will not be sacrificed, okay? I don't know, I can't, I can't see a whole lot. I didn't know it was gonna be quite this big when I ordered it. So, <laughs> she's, this hat is from Killstar. It was their summer collection. And I, I thought it was gonna be like super witchy and gothy, but it's very like, I feel like I'm Amish, honestly, like no hate on the Amish, cause I know I'm gonna get comments about it. But seriously, I feel like I could be Amish, but do Amish people watch YouTube? Cause I, I thought they weren't allowed to have like, like media like any source of media, I don't know. Anyway, I didn't realize it was gonna be this big. Um, it's just, it might be a little, it might it might not work. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> this, this might be a little too much. I'm not really sure if you have any ideas how you can <laughs> style this better. Um, this, all I'm gonna say is it didn't, it doesn't look like the photo. Like the photo online was really cute, this, like, look, what is this? This is like Little House on the Prairie stuff. I don't, how do you style this? You know what I mean? Like when it's this, when it's this floppy, do you do like, like I guess that could kind of work. I don't know. Suggestions please, comments. $20 hat that I'm just not sure what I'm gonna do with. Also, I'd like to bring your attention to the center of my face. You would think that that was like a pimple. I wish it was a pimple. Actually, I was cleaning my backyard and I have these like beautiful trees that like hang over and I was trimming the trees and I stabbed myself with a tree branch. What I'm gonna do is take some uh, Neosporin and just, uh, let's just hope it heals soon, you know? Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today is gonna to be a controversial chat, which I'm really excited for because, oh, who doesn't love a controversial chat? You know what I mean? So I did um, do a couple of chats about this <clears throat> on my paranormal channel. Um, and I actually released like a mini pilot on that channel from this location. And the feedback I got was pretty much one of two things. I had people either A, that were from Paonia, Colorado, and they were like highly offended I would talk badly about their town. Or B, yes, I've experienced some of the creepy stuff that you have, um, and here's what I experienced, here's my story. The pilot, when I'd released it, and I, I talked about obviously shooting the pilot. So we're gonna talk about the haunted Bross Hotel Bed and Breakfast that is located in Paonia, Colorado. It's about four to four and a half hours outside of Denver, if you're curious. It's literally like, ugh, back mountains, back country to get to it. And today we're going to be doing Juvia's Place, like full face Juvia's Place. <clears throat> and I'm gonna give my opinion on all of the Juvia's Place stuff. So first of all, I hope we can cover this bad boy because I've been literally makeup free for a couple days trying to like let it heal and I just, not so sure that's gonna happen, you know what I'm saying. All right, I have two, actually I have three foundations. I have um, the Velvety Matte Foundation I Am Magic full coverage in Alexandria and one in Morocco, Morocco, I'm not sure how you say that. It has holes in it because Theo got a hold of it and decided to puncture it. So I'm sure that's sanitary. Um, and then I also have another stick foundation by Juvius. I think I am so not gonna be able to wear that. No, that's how much, how tan I am from driving in the Jeep. So I don't know if this is gonna work. That's pretty full coverage. And then I also have a uh, concealer by Juvia's Place. This one though, by the way, is Lima. So it's fairly pale. That's my, <laughs> my normally pale color. And then this is the concealer, which is in 23. So I'm gonna take a wet beauty blender by, um, who is this by? Who are you from? Where are you from? Beauty Bakery, there we go. So here's the tea on Juvia's Place. This is amazing full coverage, I'm not gonna lie. 
Um, I love how full coverage this is because like I need full coverage for filming and I just I prefer fil I, I've always just preferred full coverage problem is, is like I'm not sure what's in this foundation I, I think it's like a it's a vegan formula I'm pretty sure but it breaks me out bad so um I was really apt to review this um, a long time ago but I didn't because when I had first bought it I realized it caused cystic acne so that color, that shade, in case you're curious, is Alexandria. Now I'm going to do concealer. I always do wear really, really bright concealer because I do like it to be um, like brightening under the eyes. This is in 23. It's super bright. Loose setting powder in white sands is $12. And then... Their highlighter is 15, so I love their highlighter. This is, I think, Nefertiti, which is like my favorite highlight from Juvia's Place. I wear this all the time. The setting powder and highlighter are same size. Um, and I thought that was just a little bit disappointing because like you compare it to something like Fenty. This is a Fenty, and I mean, you know that like, you're talking about a difference in price. This is like, you know, what, 35 or $40, where this one's like 12. But still, it's just for a setting powder, you usually use a lot. So for getting a small amount like this, I was kind of like sad when I got it in the mail. So I'm gonna take the setting powder and I'm going to use this really big puff and apply it all over, cause Vegas. First of all, I need to decide what color scheme I'm gonna go for, cause y'all know it's probably gonna be dark. I think I'm gonna go for like, I really like this green. I want this green to really stand out. And I think I'm gonna use this pink as like an inner highlight somehow. Okay, so the Bras Hotel, which is Paonia, Colorado, was actually founded by the Gunnison River, which was originally founded by the Ute Indian tribe in like 1882. So the area is really, really old. Obviously, eventually Westerners took the land over from the Indians, which probably has a whole nother problem if you think about like alien curses and whatnot. Alien curses? Indian curses. Hello, Crystal, are you there today? Anyways, um, yeah, probably Indian cursed land, like, you know, the story, all that jazz. This looks heavy and dark, so I'm very, very intimidated at the moment. Just stand by a second. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Fine, it's safe. Play ball. I think I need this. Isn't this the cutest mirror ever? Is that a cute, isn't that cute? I'm gonna use this little baby mirror while I do this. Hope you guys are okay with that. I'm sorry, I was wrong. What I meant to say was the Ute Indians were actually removed from the land in 1882. So you can imagine what was going on, you know, if there's, it's already been alien land. What is wrong with me? Why do I keep saying aliens? Are aliens here in my house tonight? Like what's going on here? Oh my God, I'm gonna have to redo this video like eight times. I don't even know what's wrong with me. Am I having a seizure? Anyways, the native tribes that it, oh, I almost said aliens again. Something's wrong with me guys. I think I need to be, I think it's quarantine got me finally. So the Ute Indians were removed in 1882. And so it was said that there were a lot of angry um, natives that were upset they had to leave their land because like all other tribes, they were kicked out from where they had been forever. And it's just not fair and wrong in so many ways. So this is taking a second to build up, but it's a really beautiful blue. It's like a very deep royal blue, kind of just like stamping it into where I need to put it. So they started growing lots of like fruits there particularly like peaches and I think there were like fruit trees too but apparently in like 1893 they grew some sort of like amazing what they called paonia peaches and that's pretty much how like the area like became famous and and like its name stuck with it which was paonia colorado by the way I believe it was the world's fair that won um in 1893 for the best fruit or whatever. Then, you know, all kinds of other things started coming up when it became like industrialized, such as coal was discovered in a, in a certain mine that was nearby. So then like the whole area became prominent for 
mining like they had all kinds of things going on it was like a very busy area for like the 18 late 1800s so now we're gonna fast forward to about 1900 now this is when the the quote Bross family moves to Paonia Colorado which is once again quite literally like the middle of nowhere so the Bross family moves to Paonia Colorado in 1900 and you know it's pretty much well known off the bat that Laura Bross which is the wife of um, Mr. Bross, pretty much like wears the pants in the family, which is pretty rare for that that day and age. Like you're talking about the 1900s, like usually, you know, women were told to sort of be in their husband's shadow and not say a word and they were housewives and that was just sort of it. Mrs. Bross was known where she came from to be um, very much a, uh, entrepreneur so I think she just kind of wanted to continue that image as she went along wow that green is like isn't that beautiful purchased in 1900 but by 1903 it was actually operational so it probably took that long for them to actually prepare you know this hotel or this inn William Taylor Taylor Bross was her husband and um, they were functioning you know the property it was very successful they actually ended up making it into like kind of a boarding house so Laura Bross actually purchased the house that was next to the Bross Hotel. And she made that into like the original boarding house. It was actually fully functional by um, 1903. And then her husband ended up buying the lot of land, or actually I think it was two lots of land next to it. And he eventually built it and turned it into the actual, what's, what today is the Bross Hotel um, in Paonia, Colorado, or bed and breakfast. That one wasn't open until 1906 because obviously they had to do like some major construction on it. He was known as W.T. Bross to the entire community of Paonia. They'd obviously helped bring some money in by establishing kind of like a bed and breakfast for people to stay at. So the town respected them quite a bit. He was known for being a part of the team council where his wife was the one that was actually running the bed and breakfast. That was actually kind of her dream to run it. So he ended up becoming the deputy sheriff in town for Paonia, Colorado. He would wait at the train station for the incoming train that would go to Paonia. And he would invite guests to come have like tea and crumpets at his wife's bed and breakfast, which I think is really cute. And he would literally like sheriff them in to see his wife so that they got extra business. Everyone knew Mr. and Mrs. Bross in town and it was deemed um, their inn, the Bross Hotel or the Bross Inn Bed and Breakfast, was known as the finest um, bed and breakfast um, in town and the best restaurant. Um, so everybody knew them. And obviously the town wasn't very big. It never was that big. So sadly, like you would say like, oh wow, this family, even for the, especially for the 1900s, they had a lot going for them. But Mr. Bross ended up passing away, um, you know, only about 20 years after all of this started. So it was about 1921 when Mr. Bross suddenly passed away. His youngest son, who was Otto, ended up becoming the new owner of, you know, the bed and breakfast. He finished the basement and turned the basement into kind of like a meeting room for anybody in town to come have their meetings. Um, he was known to be a little bit more erratic than like his parents were. In 1930, since Otto was known for being a little bit more erratic um, when it came to businesses than his parents, he had decided to um, turn the hotel into like an actual boarding house. He never really got his finger down, you know, on running like the business the way his parents did, which was kind of a shame. And the town slowly kind of started seeing um, you know, the Bross Hotel sort of go downhill from there. In 1944, Otto decided he wanted out of, you know, owning this and he decided to sell it. And then over the next 50 years, the hotel changed hands several times. But there was a promise when each person um, newly owned it. And the promise was Otto was allowed to live and fulfill his final years there. Um, and he ended up dying inside of the Bross Hotel in one of the most haunted rooms. If you haven't seen that documentary on my other channel, I will link it below painfully because it, it was a painful thing to shoot, but it's fine. I will link it anyway. It was painful to shoot because the crew that I had didn't really take it very seriously. I had someone on set that had severe anxiety and not that I'm knocking somebody for having anxiety but 
every time I would go to like shoot with the crew, he just kept talking and talking and he couldn't stop. And so a lot of the footage was kind of ruined because of that. I couldn't use a lot of the footage. So I was really upset because that was like a lot of work that goes into and money that goes into shooting, you know, an actual pilot. The story of it goes, you know, when I was there was it was beautiful. I had a really big issue um, with the own. It wasn't the owner. It was the innkeeper. Um, she had worked there for quite a while and she was trying to tell me the story of, um, you know, this haunted location and while she was talking to me she was pretty much going in and out of consciousness of like claiming she was Laura Bross and she couldn't be Laura Bross because Laura Bross was alive in the early 1900s and I'm talking like we filmed there like 2014 2015 and I was trying to get a straight answer out of her and she was like flip-flopping back and forth between claiming she was the innkeeper and claiming she was Laura Bross, who was the original owner. And I was really frustrated. I, in fact, I was so frustrated, I ended up not wanting to use any of that footage because I didn't want her to look bad, you know, publicly. It, it was just really frustrating. I didn't really know what was going on. I think not just me, but like the whole crew was sort of confused with, yeah, we thought she was possessed basically like she was acting like she was possessed and it wasn't like a you know a bad possession and we're not talking like the things you see on tv clearly she had muted so much with the energy of laura bross who was definitely in that home because we had gotten you know plenty of evidence of it um that she um that she um that she um, that she sort of started to become Laura Bross, like literally in her real life. When I was at the Bross Hotel was, you know, we were kind of frustrated. We had a long day. We filmed. We actually did, you know, do paranormal investigating. Found a lot of evidence. We were exhausted. What we had done is we were actually staying at the Bross. And when we stayed at the Bross, it was basically boys and girls. So I had the boy crew sleeping together and then all the girls in one room. And what ended up happening was the crew got so scared to stay in there alone the boys did the boys got the boys of the crew got so scared they had to come stay with the girls anyway they came and stayed in my room with us and uh, we were asleep and I'd say it was probably about four in the morning we're laying there and most of us are pretty much asleep all of the boys are pretty much on the floor in sleeping bags like completely passed out and only about three of us start hearing what sounds like to be chanting like chanting chanting like really loud chanting we're laying in bed and we're frozen and we're like I heard it. I was like, oh my God, do you guys hear that? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, is the window open? Like, it sounded like it was almost outside the window. And they were like, no, the window's not open. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? Like, we had had some issues shooting in the downtown, um, downtown area part of Paonia. Clearly, we don't look like we're from Paonia. Like, it's kind of a small town and, and you know, people dress differently. <laughs> and, um... So when we were downtown filming on like kind of like the main street, um, the police actually showed up and they, they didn't want us to film down there. And I was like, wait a minute, like legally I know, you know, from being a film producer, like I know the law. And if you're on like a public sidewalk, you can film, you don't need a permit. Now, if you're like shutting down a street, then sure, you're going to need a permit. But I was like, you can't kick us out of here. I know the state laws for filming. And so they didn't end up, you know, actually kicking us out. I'm going to, I found these, um, these are extension fix is what they're called. Um, they're basically like, they're supposed to mimic extensions. So this one's called the D curl, the D. And it says they have an invisible band by Ardell. So I haven't tried these before. So anyway, we're laying there and we can't sleep. None of us are brave enough to get up and get a camera. Like, I'm gonna be honest and say, like, I felt like I was completely frozen. Like, even if I could have gotten up, I don't think I could have because I felt like something had, like, taken me over and just froze me. I couldn't move. So my there's a couple camera guys that hear it and they're like, oh my God, like, what should we do? And I'm like, I don't know, like, just be quiet. And I think we just need to, like, not, a, you know, I don't know, like, because it sounded like real people. Like, I'm not talking about ghosts. Like, this is 
real people doing some sort of like weird chanting shit. And if we are in some town with some weird freaky deaky thing going on, I will not be sacrificed, okay? I will not be the one that's sacrificed. So shut up and let's be quiet and let's not like give them our location. You know what I mean? So we ended up staying quiet, but the chanting went on forever, like literally until sunrise. And um, we didn't get it on film. We were scared. I couldn't even reach for my cell phone. And once again, I don't know if it was just scared or if I was literally like being taken over. It sounded like it could be Latin. I'm not really sure. Um, I just know that it wasn't English and it was in like tones of rhythmic, like rhythmic, like da da da, ra da, ra da da, da like very chanty, rhythmic sort of sounds. So this chanting is just going on and on. We don't know where it's coming from. Um, we did ask the innkeeper about it the next day and she had no clue what we were talking about and she looked at us like we were crazy. So I pretty much kind of just like ended the conversation with that. I need like, what kind of lip do I do with this? I don't know what to do. Like, I feel like that's a bold eye, so I probably shouldn't do something so bold, but then again, I always go, go dark or go home. What about like just some dark lip gloss? I have Stilla, it's called In the Black. What about just like some dark lip gloss? What do you think? I mean, that's okay, do you think? Okay, let me finish the video, but one second. So the follow-up from you know this conversation basically was I had some people that were really offended from Paonia, Colorado that I basically outed them. I ended up having like half the town basically mad that I was sort of like outing them and I made this YouTube video. But then a bunch of people started to come forward. Not too long ago, this guy messages me on Instagram. He's like, hey, I saw your Paonia videos and I wanted to tell you, I used to be a contractor that worked up in Paonia, Colorado, and I know the chanting that you're talking about. So he said it would only take place on certain nights of the week, but he would work as a contractor up there. He lived about an hour away. And he said one night, finally, him and his like crew contractor, they were working on like a church, rebuilding a church. He said that they left and it was about three or four in the morning, which was the same time that we heard the chanting. He said that they went around the corner and they were driving because it was so loud they wanted to see where it was coming from. He's, there's like this little art district that's in Paonia, Colorado. I've been there. It's like an art building. It's like a brick building. There's a um, bottom floor that has like, uh, well, when I was there, it was kind of like an eatery. It was like an Italian restaurant that was an outdoor Italian restaurant. But he said that these people were dressed in robes. There were two leaders that were wearing um, purple robes and the rest of the congregation was wearing um, black. So I've been trying to figure out what that could mean, but he said that they were chanting in Latin. He heard it, he actually heard it several times. He said it scared him so bad that he never took contract work again in Paonia, Colorado. So anyway, if you guys know about maybe what's happening, what are they chanting, what are they doing? He said there had to have been at least 100 people there and the town of Paonia is very small. In 2010, the population of Paonia was 1,451, so 1,451. So if there was 100 people there, that's a lot of people to be get together to be doing some sort of worship. I don't wanna say that it's satanic because I don't know if it's satanic, but if you guys know maybe what purple and black robes would mean if the two leaders were wearing purple robes, let me know what you think below. Um, I've tried to research it, I can't find it. If there's Latin involved, I would, be, I would assume it would be some sort of dark worship and some sort of weird things going on. What do you guys think is going on in Paonia, Colorado? By the way, the Bross Hotel is historic, it is beautiful, and it is very haunted. So if you ever do get the chance to go to the Bross Hotel and stay in Paonia, Colorado, it's amazing, it's very haunted. We got um, Mrs. Bross coming through, Mr. Bross coming through, we got Otto. Um, once again, I'll link below um, the actual uh, pilot that I did when I was there and we also got something called um, Roswell rods which are considered to be alien life forms in spirit form so please give my video a thumbs up please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about the Bross Hotel will I ever go back probably not it's definitely not for me um, but I do hope you guys get to experience it if you're ever there um, and as always I will catch you guys next time follow me on social media maybe it was like Maybe it was the Roswell rods that were here from the Bross Hotel that was making me say alien so much. Maybe, maybe Laura and Mr. Bross were aliens.
At this point, nothing would shock me, you know? 